Hey guys, I'm here with uh, Tom from Trailblaze Nutrition and we, today we thought we'd uh, we'll sit down with Tomo and um, ask him a few questions about, I guess, yeah, bait questions that you'll ask us around some functional sports nutrition. Um, without further ado, we'll give it away. Tom, thanks for uh, joining us. No worries, it's a pleasure to be here. Good man, thanks good man. Me on. Good man. Well, um, yeah, thanks Tom for joining us. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about Trailblaze Nutrition and what it is you guys do? Sure, so Trailblaze Nutrition is um, I set up the business a few years ago because I'd, I'd started to do a few endurance events and just noticed that people's nutrition wasn't as good as it could be. And I thought it was such a, such a there's so much of, um, of our lives which are outside of our control, but the food that we put into our mouth is largely within our control. So it seemed like a controllable factor which people weren't doing. When I asked around, I sort of realised that, um, that people didn't necessarily know how easy it was to, to really um, have a great sport, sports nutrition diet. Mm. And, and, and sports nutrition information is expensive to come across good information. So I set up Trailblazer to, to bring expert sports nutrition to the everyday athlete, mm. basically. So I tried to do that in a way which is affordable. Right. And, um, and it's affordable because um, I do it on the internet. So um, I produce... Oh, great. I, I produce nutrition plans for people doing an event. They will, they will email me and we'll, they'll fill in a questionnaire and we'll kind of email back and forth so I can um, get, get the gist of what their goals are and then I'll send them a nutrition plan right, right. For, for that specific, specific event. Is it, is it possible to help train a bad diet? I think it depends on what level you're talking about, but um, I think you can get to a fairly good standard out um, with a bad diet. But whether or not you're going to stay there long term is a, is a different story. Yeah. I think when you look at athletes who are at the top of their game and have been there for a long time, they're the guys who put, who focus on the, the extras and nutrition. Yeah. Yeah. I was, uh, when you sent the email to her, I was thinking of something like Kelly Slater, who's, right. who's about 10 years older than the next oldest guy. The surfer, the pro surfer. Yeah, the yeah. pro surfer, who's, who's you know, dominated the sport for the last 20 years. And he's the one guy who was focused on his nutrition over that time. Um, and then you get a lot of the flash in the pans um, in any sport. And I think those are the guys who tend to um, tend to not, not take the other things seriously. They might train hard, but they might not be really stretching afterwards, or, or they might not be eating the right foods yeah. afterwards or before. Right. So they get injured, or they get sick, and, and they kind of uh, lose their way a bit. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a saying out there in the sports nutrition field is, is that you can't un- outrun a bad diet. Um, but, it, it, but some people, can, uh, they might achieve their goals with a bad diet, but the bad diet might be the thing which holds them back from achieving their goals as well. Interesting, so. interesting. So, yeah, I guess it's really about balance? It's definitely about balance. Yeah. Right? And, and I think it's also about um, your training program is a journey to a, to a destination. Mm-hmm. And your training plan, you might take three or four steps forward. In a, in a training session, mm. but then if you choose not to eat the right foods after that training session, you've missed an opportunity to take another step. Forward. Right, okay. Or if you have really bad foods um, after that training session, or you go out on the beers, or you um, or you don't rehydrate, then you, you might have to take a step back. Mm. So you're kind of undoing the hard work that you've done. Yeah. Well, what should folks be eating based on the type of like sports activity? They, they do like for example you talk about that marathon runner um you know what i mean what you're going out running marathons or if you're grinding away in the gym yeah you know, so what, what you it's kind of uh, this big thing in sports nutrition at the moment is periodized nutrition and periodized it's, nutrition. yeah so it's, it's talking about how um say we use the marathon example yeah. you might um you might do a whole bunch of um, you know you might do a long run once a week you might do your mid medium run in the middle of the week and then you've got your bits and pieces around that but you also might go to the gym right so your your nutrition for that gym session is going to be different to what you're going to do in, in preparation for your um your long run on the weekend right so um with for running if you're trying to build in like you've got to think about the training goals for that session so on your long run you're trying to build endurance uh, you want to make sure that you're getting out there for a couple of hours at least so you're going to be feeding yourself carbohydrates most likely to, um, to fuel that session and make sure that you've got enough energy to perform that session really well. Right. Sometimes um, when you're long run it might actually be that you more sort of stress your uh, fat burning ability. Okay. So you might skip the carbs yes. before, that, before that session and you might, you might not consume carbs on that run you know, you might not have your gels in your sports drink until an hour or two hours into that. Right. Just to kind of give your body the chance to, to stress its fat burning stores. Right. So you can see that even the same type of session, you, 
can approach it in different ways depending on your goals from that session. So just like if you were going to go to the gym, your goal is probably more uh, muscle related and you're going to be wanting to make sure that you've got fuel to, um, to perform well at the gym, you know, so that you can operate at a decent intensity. But at the end of the day, if you're going into lifting weights, you're not going to, it's generally not um, glycogen or carbon running out of energy which is going to stop you at the gym. It's right. more going to be like you've your, your, um, you've done all the exercises that you wanted to do. So you're not going to be focusing so much on carbohydrates, but you might refuel and make sure that you've got protein for that protein. muscle repair and things right. like that. I mean, carbohydrates do play a role in, in, um, in you know, a gym program because you've got to make sure that you've got enough energy, but, um, but you can see that where the emphasis might be a bit with carbs then, I mean, how, how does a carb work? And, and is there such thing as a, a good or a bad carb? Yes and no. Well, we'll start with how they work. So basically, carbohydrates are food. Mm. So potato, rice, pasta, turmeric are all are all carbs. So personally, I think turmeric is a bad carb because I don't like it. But you might like turmeric, so Love for you, it's a, it's a good carb. Yeah. So when you, the, the carbs go in your mouth, yep. you swallow it, it goes into your stomach, and it starts to get broken down. Mm. And um, it goes into your intestines, and it gets broken down food. Right. Now, it gets broken down into its simplest form. The simplest form of carbohydrate are what we call sugars, they're basic sugars. And, um, and those sugars get absorbed into our blood and it gets shuffled around by our blood to where it's needed. So if you're, if you're running, it'll go to your muscles. If you're cruising, watching TV, it'll go to your brain, feed your brain, but it also might get, get converted to fat in the liver or something like that and right. get stored and, and the excess will get stored as fat. Um, if you're using carbohydrates during your recovery from the long run, then that's going to refuel your carbohydrate stores and, and make sure that you've um, got the ability to go for a long run later on in the week as well. So in terms of good carbs or bad carbs, I think that I don't really like to think in terms of good and bad, but it kind of goes back to what we were talking about before. It depends on the goals of what you're doing. If your goal is to have a delicious, fizzy, refreshing drink, then a sugary carbohydrate beverage um, might be what you're after at that time. If your goal is to um, lose weight, then a sugary drink is not going to be a good idea because that's going to uh, get converted to fat. It's not going to satisfy you. You're going to play heaven with your blood sugar levels, and you're going to be hungry or thirsty again in a couple of hours, and you, and, you know it might lead to overeating, overeating then. Um, in terms of your training. Um, you, you've got to also think about um, meeting, the energy, meeting the energy needs. So if you're starving yourself, then you're not going to be getting the most out of your training. Right. So, yeah. so carbohydrates play a role in making sure that you're well fueled and things like that. So when you, when you talk about good and bad carbs, we can also, we'll, we'll try not to use the word good and bad, but some carbs are better than others. So, and I think that comes with, um, with the package that they're in. So if you've got something like um, potato or Kumara, um, they're going to come with fiber and, and vitamins and minerals. But if you've got a sugary sugary drink, they're not coming with anything else that's beneficial. Right. Here's something I've prepared earlier. <laughs> this is a uh, this is this is orange juice. Yeah. How many oranges do you think made it into made into this glass of orange juice? I'm going to say a modest two. Modest two. I'm going to I'm going to um, pull rank on you here as a dietitian. <laughs> And I reckon there's probably about six or seven oranges. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So in my glass of orange juice here, I'm eating all the sugar and the carbohydrates yes. from six or seven oranges, yep. which might be about anywhere from 80 to 100 grams of carbohydrates maybe. So when I drink this orange juice, I'm getting 80 to 100 grams of fruit sugars, yes. but I'm not getting all the fiber and things which came from right. that orange. Okay. I'm not getting as many of those other nutrients. Right. So, um, and also, I would... I, I would never sit down and eat six oranges at once. No. I'd eat one orange and I'd get my 15 grams of carbohydrates right. and, and I'd get all the fiber with that. Right. But now I'm I'm going to probably eat six or seven oranges over the course of this conversation. But that's not something I'd do if it wasn't in the form of an orange juice. Interesting. Okay. So that makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of com discussion out there about you know, if sugar is actually good or bad for you. Or is it, you know, Absolutely evil. I mean, what about sugar? Yeah, sugar's, sugar's under the pump at the moment. Um, sugar has a role, but sugar is is pretty is probably pretty bad. Yeah, like, like you know, I hesitate to say it, but it, it is under the pump for a reason, and, and it is it is contributing a lot to the obesity right. that we see. 
it should be doesn't satisfy you when you have it. Mm. It gets converted to fat really quickly and you want it when it goes in and gets converted to fat really quickly. Mm. And that's a problem. But there are places there are times and places for sugar. Mm. Um, so if you're training for a marathon, you might take on sugar during during that run. Right. And, and that's that's a great deal right. in that situation. After your marathon after your run after your run on the weekend, you uh, you need to refuel really quickly and sugar can be a great form of getting that sugar um, from the food from right. outside of your body okay. into the muscle cells yep. um, where it's needed really, really quickly. So a bit of sugar after a long run isn't going to do you any harm. Mm. It's the it's the kind of the fact that we overeat sugar, which is a real problem. Right. And I mean, I think half the problem is that sugar's delicious. Yes. Like, it's really hard to stop eating it. Like, I, um, if I have a packet of chocolate biscuits, then it's the half of the packet is eaten before dinner and the other half is eaten after dinner. Yeah. So you don't buy the chocolate biscuits. Yeah. But you try and have the, the, top, the packet of chocolate biscuits every couple of weeks, right. yeah. not every night. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I was kind of trying to think of a good, a good metaphor, and I think the sugar is kind of like television. It's yeah. time and place of television. Of course. But if you're watching it the whole time, yeah. then, then that's probably bad for you inherently. And it's also. Not only just the television is, being, is bad for you, but it, but you're not doing other things which could be better for you. So you're not, um, you know, you're not exercising, or you're not spending time with your family, or you're not working on, on things which need to be done around the house. So it, it's kind of bad in that yet yeah, television rocks your brain. You know, sugar sugar rocks your body. But also, um, if you're not eat, if you're eating that sugar, then maybe you're not eating those proteins or that healthy fat or a, or a healthier right, version right. of carbohydrates. So, so sh- sugar, in a way, is almost a distraction from what you should be eating. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, yeah. You could, it, that's definitely one role that it plays. Yeah. Okay. What's more effective in terms of losing weight? Better food choices or increased exercise activity? Yeah. Again, it depends, but. There's a, there's a general rule or a general kind of thought that exercise, oh sorry, your diet is going to contribute about 80%, 80% and your exercise about 20%. So that's a very general kind of, you know, I don't know where they got these figures from. Right, okay. Uh, but so I've it's a bit of a dubious myth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I guess what they're trying to say is that um, in, in the context of weight loss, you're often the Often the people trying to lose weight aren't able to exercise at a high intensity and right. for long periods of time. Right. They're, they're, they might be walking or jogging or, or, um, or, or doing some light gym work, but they're not able to get into the gym and really smash it out there. They're not able to go on an hour long run or something like that. So the diet's going to play a really important part in right. that situation. But you wouldn't you wouldn't ignore exercise completely. Yeah. They go hand in hand. So. Um, so, you know, if somebody's trying to lose weight, then they still want to use exercise to help them do that. Of course, yeah. And it, it, it changes again for people who are, who are able to exercise um, at a reasonable intensity, and then they are going to be able to burn up a lot of calories. You know, if you can go running for an hour, then you're burning a hell of a lot of calories doing that, and that's going to be awesome for your weight loss. Right. And a lot of, a lot of fit and healthy people will have crappy diets, but because they're able to exercise and, and do, do a lot of that sort of thing, they're going to stay at a healthy weight. Right. So I think if you're trying to lose weight, you've really got to focus on your diet and you've got to make sure that you're doing that well and then use exercise to complement that. Right, okay. But you can't forget the fact that exercise is, is the magic drug. It, it, it's, um, its effects on the body are so varied and so um, profound that, that you know everybody should be making sure that they include exercise regardless of their weight. So, um, so regardless of whether you're trying to lose weight, then exercise is a really healthy thing to do. Awesome.